Hi, it's the Woolista here. And let's see, I videotaped about a month ago, I'm going to say. Oh, yeah, because it was Thanksgiving, because I uh, was getting ready for my trip to go to California. Let's see. This is the Woolista. And you can find me on Ravelry.com as the Woolista. You can friend me and see all of the projects that I make, what type of yarn I use, the pattern, the progress, the end results. Because some of them end up getting given away before I can tape a show. Um, a lot of the stuff that I make is charity items with some groups that I belong to on Tuesday nights at the in Wycliffe we meet at an assisted living home uh, uh, Brookdale that's what it's called now it used to be called fairways because there's a golf course across the street and I think it's still called fairways but the assisted living home is called Brookdale anyway we've been I've been getting together with some crocheters there for 13 or so years I don't want to date myself too bad here on but uh, we make tons of charity items, and last year, I think we ended up donating 400 and something items, hats, scarves, gloves, headbands, you know, head wraps, blankets to babies, to veterans, to, uh, a whole assortment of things. So I keep my charity um, items on Ravelry, because I usually just take a picture and then put them in the donation pile and they're gone. But let's get to... Uh, updating you on a few things I was I taped last time I think a week before I left for California it was so much fun I had the best time with my daughter and her husband they took me to the best restaurants loved going to the ranch it's the one that Clint Eastwood bought and uh, I guess the story behind it was it was a ranch that was going to be uh, torn down and made into a development of some sort houses that type of thing and he bought the ranch and it's a working ranch and they he put a restaurant on it and turned the house into a, like a bed and breakfast I don't know if it's big enough for a hotel I didn't get in that part we just went to dinner uh, it's beautiful the meal was superb you can only get in from I think it was Five to ten at four, we a little after four we got there, and listened to a man playing piano music, had a few cocktails, and the dinner was just absolutely superb. The scenery is beautiful; it's a must go to if you go to California. Uh, we were in the Monterey area. Um, where else did we go? We went to the aquarium. It is huge. It is. It is an, uh, it's another must. You must go to see it. I walked around for, I think it, we walked around for five hours, a little over five hours, and we just barely saw the whole aquarium. And it's fed right from the ocean. Uh, it's just the coolest thing. They have all of these open, live, different aquariums where you can, you know, touch the, the, the sea animals and... They have all these different outings where you can go out. A lot of the animals, they rehabilitate, and then they stay close to the area. And you can actually pay to take um, little fairies and stuff out there and go see them. But anyway, it's a must-see. And the little air, the shop around there, uh, the streets, lots of little shops to go visit. Um, oh, wow. Anyway, must-see. Go out there. So much to do. Uh, I believe I'll be going back again, so I'll have to find some new things to do when I go back there next time. Let's. While I was there, I went to a knitting shop, and this is weird. Like, there's not enough knitting shops in Monterey. There's one knitting shop, which is the one I went to. It's called Monarch Knitting, and it was. The closest one to where I was staying. All the other knitting shops were like a couple hours away from where I was staying. I was like, there's one knitting shop that's like within, I think it was within 30 minutes. I was like, that's crazy. Anyhow, while I was there, 
It's called Monarch Knitting. Beautiful shop. Really nice shop owner. Um, they had a really cute shop dog. It was, uh, I don't want to say the dog wrong, but it's one of those big ones that in the movies they have the big water jug underneath of them and they're big and huge and furry and they go rescue people. I want to say a Bern Me Bernice Mountain Dog or something like that. Um, not positive, but that's the kind of dog it was. So cute. My daughter fell in love with it. And I picked up some yarn there that I had never seen before and fell in love with it. The feel. It's called a Shibui. And I picked up these three colors right here. And I really like this color palette together. And I'm thinking I'm going to make the Pohi Locatelli's three color cashmere cow with it. And it's got a couple different textures to it. But I think that'll be perfect for these colors. So I gotta sit down and you know how it is. You buy something and you know what you're gonna do with it. You might not knit it for a year or two. I'll get there. But for now, it's in its project bag. I got to see, uh, you know, look at the pattern and see which color I'm going to put where. But I think these three colors are going to look perfect together for that cowl. And it'll be a nice light cowl I can wear in the fall. I also got there a Hedgehog Fibers Mini, Mini Skein. I'm collecting some minis. I got a couple ideas on what to do with them. And what colorway was this? Raku. R A K U. And it is really cool. I have to order some bigger skins of that actually. Um other other than that, I haven't been buying stuff because you know, it was the holidays, it was Christmas, you're buying food, you're buying stuff for everybody else I did however from the, around the table in Shaker Heights love that knitting store um, they, the girls are just beautiful people they really are and they are so helpful and so nice to all of their customers that come in it, it's a must go to store I bought a scarf holder Actually, it's just a piece of leather. It's like a, they make them out of old belts and stuff. But I like this one. And I don't, I don't have a scarf on hand, but I, this is a cowl. But I'll tell you what the idea is. So you're wearing a scarf, and a lot of times they're in triangles and stuff like that, and they slip. So what you do is you would take this, and you would position it wherever you would want to on the scarf. Usually you'd be you know, like position it up here or whatever and it would keep it, the scarf from slipping and coming undone and coming off of your body. You could also wear it as a bracelet. I mean you could wear it however you want. But that's what I got. Anyway I like this pattern. It'll go with quite a few things. And maybe not all knitted related. What else? I didn't... What else did I get? Let's talk about Christmas. So, for Christmas, from a friend, I got Wonderland Yarns Cashier, Cheshire Cat. How nice is this green? I love a green. And it is so nice. From Wonderland Knits. And then I also received from a, a friend. She had a bracelet made for me. And I, and I believe it was from Erin Lane on Etsy. And it's so cute. It's got the Knitting Diva. It has my name on it. And it's so cute. And look at that cute little bag that it came in adorable like a little sock bag okay 
And I also got for Christmas, my mom got me llama socks. How fun are those? I'm going to have to find some capri pants and wear these socks. They are hilarious. I just love them. Uh, they, that's fun. I like fun stuff. Let's see. I also received um, red. Look at this red. It's from Astral. And it is alpaca. 30% alpaca and merino wool and tinsel. It is divine and soft and beautiful. Not sure what I'm going to make with it yet. I was thinking something ooh, close to the skin, of course, because it's gorgeous. From the same person, I also received bl uh, black wool fibers, more alpaca. And these colors go beautifully together. I also got another mini. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, I remember. Okay. I got the mini dream. And it is beautiful. Look at that. I'm going to have to find the perfect project for all these minis. I just think these minis are adorable. Like you don't want to use them because they're so cute. You just want to hold on to them and keep looking at them. Um... I also got a planner. I got two planners actually for the holidays. And what was perfect, look at this, this is hilarious. F off, I'm knitting. And then this planner right here, which is nice. These are perfect sizes. You can put them right in your knitting bag or put them in your purse. And it turned out awesome because this one wasn't didn't have any uh, dates filled in, so I can use it next year. But this one was dated for this year. So I'm going to use that one this year and the other one next year. And I've got already got some notes and stuff going for them. So I'm actually writing down the projects I want to do. There's so many things you want to do and you just cannot get them all done in a year. Because I knit, I crochet, I am getting into weaving. Um, I do lots of different things. I, I can't even spin, uh, process wool. I mean... It's all fiber related, put it that way. I love fiber and wool and the smell and the touch and the feel and it de-stresses me. It just calms my mind. And if you know me, you know I'm either moving 100 miles an hour or I'm sleeping. I, th I think there's something just mechanically wrong with me. I'm either going, going, going or I'm out. Um, let's see. Oh, another girlfriend got me. Is this hilarious? I can't run. I'm a mermaid. That is so cute. <laughs> and she also got me a mermaid that's hanging from my car right now. It's a silver piece and it says, have a mesmerizing day. And it's got lots of glitter and it's pretty and it sparkles and it's me. And then look at this little bag. It says you are mesmerizing. Look at the teeny tiny little bag. I'm just going to keep it on the corner of my corner shelf to just throw odd things in while I'm, until I figure out what to, where their final home will be. I also, from my Bella Cardin girlfriend, she is amazing. She makes the best bags in the world. I don't have my big mermaid bag with me. It's in the other room with projects. But this matches my big mermaid bag and let me tell you her bags are to die for so she made me a smaller project bag to match my big mermaid bag because we all know I love mermaids speaking of mermaids I keep getting I haven't seen her personally I haven't seen her stuff personally from any vending you know, fiber festivals that I've gone to, but the spinning mermaid keeps coming up on my Instagram. I'm going to have to get her stuff. The colors that this person dyes are beautiful. And I'm like, ah, every time I see them, I'm like, oh my God, I love that. She also made me a little pouch to go with my bag. And get this. She made 
a tin to go with the bag. And it has a magnet in it so you can stick your, um, you know, all your stitch markers and stuff will stick to it. And little, little gadgets that you don't want to fall. Is that hilarious? She also made me stitch marker bobbins in the color of my bag. She's, she's so creative. She is remarkable. Everything she does is beautiful. I just love her stuff. Can I get enough of her stuff? Let's see. What else? Oh, and I got a kit <laughs> to make two cute little mermaids. These are going to be adorable. I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to make them and probably hang them in my, in here in my craft room at my studio. I've turned my garage into a studio because I do so many different things. Look at how cute that is. Oh my goodness. And it comes with little eyes and little, that's a whole little kit to make two little mermaids. <laughs> and it's just goofy and cute. I love it. Just love it. And let's see. From crochet, I won, oh God, the, uh, the biggest, beautifulest crystal bowl. It stands like this, or like this tall off of my table in the kitchen. It's gorgeous. And it's huge and round. I mean, like this big around. And you could just dump. We have it filled with candy right now over the holidays, which is not so good. When people come over, I'm like, take a bag of candy. I don't want to eat it. Take a bag of candy. And then from the giveaway table, like we do this little thing at Crochet Christmas that uh, everybody brings in stuff. And this they keep calling numbers and you go up and take stuff until you're done. So this was a little hat kit hat yarn knitting kit so this will be cute make it up into a little kid's hat and give it away it's adorable all right that's enough I think that's all of the acquisitions uh, I will show you my looms later so Updates on Katrina socks. <laughs> They're not any further. I took them to California. Good thing I did. Put them on her feet and knit an extra couple inches. I was like, okay. I'm going to have to make a, a special mental note of that. And then, does, according to the measurements online, they should have fit, but they, they really didn't. They needed a couple extra inches. The black and gold scarf, it's still... The same spot it was the last show. And, I mean, at the holidays. Uh, you know, everybody had tons of stuff to do. You would think that with the more time off of work, that I would have got more done. No, guess what happened? I was sick the whole entire holidays. Yeah, sick, sick, sick. Started, like, after my dad's big Christmas party. The next day, I'm like, <clears throat> oh, I think I'm getting a head cold. My ear was itching. So that was Sunday. The next day I went to work. By the end of work, I was just like toast. And then Tuesday, I ended up working from home, doing some emails and stuff in the morning. And then, I mean, I was just like, oh, I'm just getting sick. Slept the next couple days. Um, and, you know, and then New Year's Eve came. We, you know, Al pretty much babysat the whole time. I stayed in the chair just trying not to trying to keep my head up um I mean I was just like really feeling ill so then by my birthday on the second that morning I woke up had him rush me to the emergency room I didn't know what the hell was going on with me there was it all started with the head cold and then, like, everything was so inflamed. I thought I had a double ear infection because I'm prone to ear infections. And I thought maybe I had strep. I thought maybe I was like, something's wrong with me. I can't breathe. You know, everything is just so swollen. Don't, like, <laughs> I had a mild heart attack a couple years ago. So, 
whenever he took me to the ER, what does he say? She can't breathe. I was like, no, 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 no. Of course, then three guys, you know, rushed me into the other room, you know, to put I me mean, put a gown on, putting things all over all over me. I'm like, I'm not having a heart attack. I just, I, like, stuff is going on. And I'm like, I mean, I couldn't breathe because this was all inflamed and I hadn't been able to use my CPAP in a couple days. And if you use the CPAP, then you know that... If you don't wear it one night, you're, you're snoring. So the next morning, you're like, ah, oh my gosh, I need some warm liquid, you know, in order to be able to, you know, calm your throat back down. So long story short, had to do a breathing treatment. I was not having a heart attack. Had to do a 20-minute breathing treatment. They were pumping steroids into my IV. That felt weird. Like, I felt like I was peeing my pants. And at the same time, I was just, I thought I went to hell. I was in engulfed in flames like threw the blanket off of me and I'm like <gasps> like I thought I was gonna burst into flames and it was so hot it was crazy and then um then I was freezing cold after that went away and then they sent me home with a barrage of stuff a sleeping pill a couple different um nasal sprays one was a saline one was a allergy one just, you know, steroids, antibiotics. I was like, oh my gosh. So days go by and um, I lost hearing. I lost hearing in my right ear and I lost half the hearing in my left ear. So can't hear like six days, five days later, something like that. I go to my regular doctor. I'm like, listen, I went to the ER days ago. I should be better. I should be able to hear. I've got this ringing in my ear. He looks in my ear. He's like, um, well, I see blood in there. I think you blew your eardrum. From having severe sinusitis, I guess you can blow your eardrum. And from blowing your nose too hard or all something like that. So I was like, well, I was so inflamed and maybe I did blow my eardrum. He had me go to an ENT the next day, went to ENT. I was at the ENT forever. He had me in a soundproof room and they're doing all kinds of ear treatments and ear um, hearing tests and like a barrage of testing, putting pressure things in my ears and then having me talk and listen to sounds. And I did not lose any hearing in my ear. I have no permanent damage in my ear. Thank goodness. I did not blow my eardrum. He said I did break a couple blood vessels in there that my hearing should come back. Now that was four days ago or something that I saw him. He said, just keep um, alternating the Flonase and the other, and the Afrin. Cause the Afrin's a decongestant, I guess. And the Flonase is more like a sinus allergy thing. So I've been alternating them back and forth and I keep hearing this crackling in my ear, but the ringing has not gone away and I still, it's like I can hear maybe 1% better than I could four days ago. It's aggravating, beyond aggravating. So anyway, I'm probably getting to the age where I'm, maybe I won't get my hearing back, who knows? Anyway, on with the show. I, I, I don't know how I got sidetracked there. Anyway, I made a dinosaur hat for my grandbaby, and I don't have a picture of it on me. I don't know if I could even pull it up, but it was so adorable. He's really into dinosaurs right now. So, I mean, I was going to try to pull it up. I don't know if I can real quick or not. Let's see. It was um, fun to put together. <laughs> Oh, I was like, oh, I can make this, no problem. Looked at the picture, and I, it was one of those, I didn't have a, like a pattern, so I kind of YouTubed it and watched how she did it, and then I was like, oh, I can do this. It's a little complicated or tricky with a couple different spots, and I wish I could have measured the hat a little better, but it turned out really good, and it fit him really well. Um... I didn't like the teeth that, oh, here it is. I didn't like the, oh, I don't know where the hell it went. Now I lost it. I did not like the teeth that the lady had on hers because they just weren't jagged enough. I wanted it to look like, you know, a dinosaur, like a monster, like, um, 
jagged, you know, err teeth. Like I would think a dinosaur's teeth would look like. Okay. So this is what it ended up looking like. And it had mean eyes like a dinosaur would. It, oh, don't mind the mannequin. I really need to get a new mannequin head. That was from a cosmetology person. And then my husband used it for some Halloween props. So it's it's been beat to hell and back. Well, scales on the back. I, I like how it turned out. I really did. I stuffed the nose. It's really cute. So there's that. Uh, let's see what else I can show you. My husband made me a loom. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Another person gave me a huge loom. And we ended up putting it together. Me and my, a friend of mine, a friend of mine came over. What day was it? Saturday. And her and me and my husband put the loom together. and Because people want to... They, I was just going to give it away. I'm not going to use this big loom. I, I was gifted to me. I thought it was going to be a smaller one. But um, it's huge. Wait till you see it. I'll have to move the camera to show it to you. Um, currently, for spinning wise, I'm kind of like all over the map today. Can you tell? I started on some Cotswold for the Shave Em to Save Em program, that three-year project that I'm doing. And let me tell you, it spins like butter. It spins so good. I, like, I uh, cut it into two, of course, so that I can spin it up on two different bobbins and then ply them together. So I've spun all of one half but this, and it, it's looking like a big old candy cane or like a crayon box. It's really cool. I, I like how it's turning out. And it spins really, really nice. And that's Cotswold wool. It's another one on the endangered um, sheep breeds. And that was, which I have to get myself moving here to be right online. I should do five each year and I'm just starting my fourth one. I should be starting my sixth one by now. But, uh, I was sick the whole entire holiday, so that kind of put me behind. For my BFL, my um, blue-faced Leicester, I spun another of the gold, or uh, yellow and red. This is like the fifth skein that I have uh, spun, and I still have half a bag to spin. And I have a friendly little competition going with my girlfriend. That I to see who will finish first. I will spin the rest of this and get it all into skeins, or she will finish her sweater that she started many many years ago. And it's a really cool sweater. It's got like um, different breeds on it, and each breed she has a diff their own fiber or wool for them. It's really cool. I can't remember the name of it, but it's it's really something cool. And let's see, the Lafayette shawl, same place, it's still like this big, but it'll get there. Um, the Easy Goes It scarf, the black one that I caked the yarn up for, it's still in the same place. The yarn is caked and it's in the bag. I've pulled my brother's blanket out and that is one thing I want to get off of my list this year. I want to finish it. There was no pattern for it or anything like that, but I think I've figured out what I'm going to do with it, and I've just been crocheting away on it now. Uh, the Snuggle is Real Cowl. I have really been working and got, I took it to California with me, and I've really been going to town on it. So last time I showed it to you, I believe I was like to here maybe. So now I've got all the way up. It said to do 13 inches. I stopped at 10, like my girlfriend said. She goes, you just don't have a swan's neck. So I don't need a whole 13 inches of a cowl for my neck. 
So I, I stopped at 10 because I tried it on and I really don't need all that. It's going to be up to my nose if, unless I, if I would want 13 inches. But I think a lot of people did stop early. So then I turned it under, picked up all the stitches, and, event, you know, the... What the hell is it called? The uh, drawstring is going to come through here. And then we're knitting the inside right now. So I'm knitting the inside. And then eventually it's going to be turned under. And that's going to be the whole inside of the cowl. And I really like how these colors are complementing each other. I love how these colors are working. And then when I get to the end, when I'm done doing the inside, I will fold over the bottom and then kitchener it and then do the drawstring. But that one has gotten way further and I'm really loving how it's turning out. The pattern's easy. You just have to make sure you write down where you left off. Or it's easy to get um, mixed up and you gotta, I did have to tink back like, twice eight different rows I was like oh man because I would you know sit around with my girlfriend start talking and be like whoop not paying attention to what I'm doing so uh, I think that's almost it oh the horn dorset that I showed you last show that was dried and clean I put it in a bag and I have to um my, the first step of the process is to pull it all apart, you know, and pick through it. It's a lot to pick through. I haven't done that yet. I'm going to show you. I'm going to turn the camera now and show you the... I'll show you a picture of it first. This is what somebody gave to me. And I thought it was going to be a small loom. And I'm going to show my... The small loom my husband made last week, and it's in front of the big loom. So, let me turn the camera, and don't mind all the charity, I have a whole bunch of donation stuff in here that um, people have given me, and I take it to the ladies on Tuesday and, and give it away so they can have uh, yarn to make the donations. So, that is the loom. This is the smaller one I'm going to be working on first. It might sound kind of goofy, but I'm going to make a plastic bag um, rug off the smaller one. Uh, my great-grandmother used to have them in her, she used to say plastic bags and like sandwich baggies and stuff. And I know many people did back then and they made uh, carpets with them and they were easily used and you know good for outside and doors and stuff and I they just remind me of her so I'm going to make one up what's one of my first things I'm also thinking about uh, all of this that I spin up weaving it in on the loom and then sewing up the edges and making it into like one of my Aldi's bags or something. Because it's the BFL and it's coarser wool that you would you would wear for like a sw out, an outside sweater. Not like a sweater against your skin. You would make uh, mittens, hats, stuff like that with this. Or more durable items. And um, I thought it would be kind of cool to weave with it. Make it into a bag and then um, put some handles on it and use it for one of my Aldi's bags. So, well, we'll see how that goes. I'm also thinking about making a pom-pom rug with it to make it like kind of retro, because it's got retro colors. I can throw it in uh, our downstairs, which has the pool table and bar and all that. We're doing that all in retro, like 50s um, stuff is down there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed catching up with me, and I hope you have a great week. And I'll try to get on here more often. It's one of my goals this year and to work on getting a, um, uh, like a label or something. But we'll see how that goes. Okay. The Woolista.